opening of the immigration centre in Ellis Island in the 19th century and Annie Moore and her two little brothers were the first people apparently to pass through and be vetted in the facility in Ellis Island. You've prob I don't know if you've walked around Cove or if you've just looked at it, but um, it grew for very humble town in her honour and it was called Queenstown. My parents always referred to it as Queenstown. However, after independence in 1922, we changed the names of lots of places back again. So it's Cove. Other ships also sailed from Cove, the prison ships, um, taking people to Australia, to Tasmania, to Van Diemen's Land, and to Sydney Harbour, of course. So Cove didn't really have that happy um, a history, but later in the 19th century, when people began to have leisure to go to the sea and have holidays, it did become a place um, maybe not quite as fancy as Brighton and the spa resorts in England, but it did become a place where people came on their holidays, those who could afford it. You can look up what houses, well, you can look up what price was on the contract. I don't know if that's the price that changed hands, but you can look up what price was on the contract when they sold their houses. In some parts of the country, houses are selling for about 50% less than they did in 2007. So it's similar to other places where there's been a recession. About the famine and the prison ships, and it's also about the Titanic and the Lusitania. The Cove was the last port of call for the Titanic before it um, went on its final journey, first and final journey. Um, Napoleon was obviously putting the fear of God into the English. They were absolutely terrified that he'd invade England. They were also terrified that he'd invade Ireland and take a back door into England. And they were probably afraid that the Irish would welcome him and show him the way and, you know, give him sandwiches for the journey. So um, the uh, British government fortified the English coastline and the Irish with these Martello towers. Oh, they were towers on which they mounted a cannon. And I mean, that's all it was for, it was to mount a cannon and, and repel. There are five of them here in Cork Harbour. There are a lot of burglar alarms, yes. Look, do you know what? We're no better than anybody else. And um, the, the island of saints and scholars, we may have been, but um, yeah, we have as many burglars as you do. Well, pro rata. Ah, yes, the country market is nearly finished now. It was just there to your right in that car park, but they, they're they meant to finish up and go away at midday. this um, distillery, the visit part, was, I suppose, built and opened and improved during our last recession as a kind of a back-to-work scheme for young people. It was in before that, but in the 1950s, they began a slum clearance and they built all these council houses 
up there on the hill. And at the time, it was known as the Red City. Not because they were communist, but because all you could see was the red tiles on the roofs. If you look to your right, say at one o'clock, there's a sort of a pepper pot shaped tower with a, a salmon at the top, actually, instead of a cockerel. The wind vane is, a, the weather vane is a salmon. That is St. Anne Shandon, a Church of Ireland church, 18th century, but it has become sort of symbolic of Cork because it's got bells and it's got four sides to it with a clock on each face. If you look up there, say, behind that little tree at one o'clock, oh, pepper pot shaped yeah. thing, it's red sandstone on two sides, like old Matthew, the Apostle of Temperance. He is the man that in the 1830s founded the Pioneer Total Abstinence Association. He wanted us all to stop drinking. Okay. 200,000 people joined up the first year. Now, I don't know where all those people have gone. We've only got 120,000 people here now. But anyway, he was a social worker and, uh, you know, he was concerned about the demon drink. And that association is still here, but it's not as popular as it used to be. This is Patrick Street. It's curved because it follows the river. Uh, there was a river down here until 1800. And then they put down wooden paving stones, which were replaced about 100 years later. to be out and about. Irish. And of course the kids are out of school, yes. Um, you should see some school uniforms. What day is today? Saturday. You won't see school uniforms. Oh, it's Saturday. They all come to hang out and, and um, get boyfriends, girlfriends. Um, and if you look there to the right, those girls who look like they're going to the beach, this is a very recent thing, and you'll notice it a lot more in England and in Ireland than you would in other country, in European countries. Very scantily dressed teenagers, like practically naked. And it's just fashion. <laughs> They're not of any more doubtful morals than anybody else. They're just very scantily dressed. That whole area on our right there is known as the Huguenot Quarter, that's French Church Street. It's where the French Protestants who were fleeing persecution in the 17th century came when they came to Cork. Oh, some musicians. That's a big music venue in there um, behind uh, an old cinema that's now a nightclub and concert venue. The old English, the English market, for those of you who had read about it, is in the block there behind us on our left, the indoor market where the Queen went to visit. I don't know why they took her to the market, because I'm sure she never goes to the market in London. I don't see her down Brighton Market somehow or other, or Brixton, uh, Brixton Market. But anyway, that's where they took her, and she was delighted, and we got lots of photographs. And now the fishmonger has a huge picture of the Queen up behind the monkey fish and the cod, with her laughing her head off. He made her laugh. And it's quite iconic, and he sent a, photo, he sent a copy of it to Buckingham Palace, and she's up there behind all the the lobsters and the codfish and the monkfish. No comparison intended. Now we're coming out of Patrick Street and we're turning into the Grand Parade, which in Gaelic is called Shrod and Copper Bui, the street of the yellow horse, because there used to be an equestrian statue of one of the Georges at the other end of it. And the horse didn't age very well. He was missing a leg and he got a bit yellow and, you know, and the statue was bronze anyway. So this too was underwater. I mean, it's just water all along here. Now, the old medieval city here, there are no medieval buildings in Cork. They didn't survive, maybe because of the water, maybe because of the bog, maybe because people kept on shooting cannons at them, who knows. But the old medieval city was one street which is parallel to the one we're on, up to our right. And there were walls around it, the wall of the city wall. It to the city by a 19th century judge. And it used to be the tradition for students to throw each other into the fountain after their exams or whatever. But you know, the students, uh, things have moved on. They don't do anything that innocent for fun anymore. <laughs> Throwing people in the fountain would be, you know, kind of lame. 
I don't know why there's a street festival on, but there, it is festival season, and you know every week there's some reason to be selling food on the street, which is good. That's um, oh yeah, the lights. We I'm not sure if I like them. They were designed by some Spanish architect. Um, the, uh, a Republican monument to our right. A uh, monument here to the soldiers of both Irish and English who died in World War One and Two. And now we're on the first commercial street in Ireland. This is where, well, this was a waterway as well. As you go along here, if you look at the buildings, they have stairs on the outside. Merchants, bankers, lawyers, accountants built their offices here. The first commercial building was down further. Did any of you see the film Michael Collins? 19th century on. This particular one here on the left is kind of interesting because you can see that the brick isn't local. Ships used to come to Cork from Holland, bringing stuff, or uh, come from Holland empty to collect butter and all the other things we exported, and they'd use the bricks as ballast. And so the bricks, they recycled bricks. This is the South Mall, and up until about 20 years ago, all the lawyers lived here or had their offices here, but that has changed a bit. Now, as you can see, the other branch of the river is just there on our right. And across there to the right is the City Hall. Now that's a comparatively recent building. It was built in the 1930s with money, some, some uh, money offered in compensation by the British government for the city love to hate here at the moment they were the cause of all our troubles so but the bank buildings were built in the mid 19th century we used to hate the lawyers before now we hate bankers and no offense if any of you are bankers or lawyers we always need somebody to blame so the little red brick built the large sprawling red brick building to our right used to be a school built in the mid 19th century, a lay school, not Catholic not with, not, or Protestant, just a school. Uh, it is now part of the district court system and the family court. Over to the left we have the police station, Gorda Siakana, the guardians of the peace, they are not armed. There are some special armed units, but like the English Bobby, they, are, they just walk around with a, a stick, so they're not armed. Apparently they were protesting. The, the protest must be over. We missed all the fun. That church over there is um, a Catholic church, neo-Gothic. Uh, all the Catholic churches in Ireland, for the most part, date from the 19th century. After Catholic emancipation, when Catholics could vote and take office and all of that, they began to you began to see the triumphalist church. They first built big neo-Gothic ones, uh, neo-Romanesque Roman ones, and then the neo-Gothic became popular. That was built by Father Theobald Matthew, the man who wanted us to stop drinking. <laughs> it took him a long time to build, actually, because of the famine, because of austerity, and also because he was so busy stopping us drinking. That's the Grand Parade there on the other side. And as we come up here, that bridge there is the Northgate Bridge, and if you look to the right, that was the old medieval city. That's all it was, one street going from one branch of the river down to the other. Wow, Don't be distracted nice. by the brewery there. A lot of the money in Cork in the 18th century and 19th century, the butter merchants, they were, in Cork was the big butter exporting place for... Ah, <laughs> Catholic na Catholic ha. Isa sa mga pinakalumang church nila. Meron lang tayong 10 minutes daw para <laughs> para magtingin-tingin. So napakatahimik ng lugar nila dito. Ang simple ng pamilya. Ganda, ganda ng weather nila dito. Ito, yun. Ito yung simbahan nila. Para yun sa mga ano, papanood kong movie.
kukuha tayo ng mga magandang angkolo lakad tayo ano na nakakasang lagi dito no BMW Mazda ayun dito pala ang harap eh pasok tayo ayan no ang ganda oh my own children I came back to Ireland and they went to the local Catholic school and there wasn't a huge problem with the parents I mean you know the church has been getting a bad press and fair enough but there wasn't it wasn't a problem to send your children to a Catholic school if you weren't particularly Catholic yourself they accommodated you and they fitted the children in as best they could I know in one of my son's classes there were a there was a child of atheistic parents who didn't want the children doing religion in his class and on confirmation day those children happened to be musical so they included them in the whole day by having them come and play the violin for the ceremony so you know it's 